What's up guys? This is gonna be uh, basically a video teaching you how to figure out what the noise is on your car. Now, if you click this video, you probably click the video because you are dealing with some kind of rumbling or roaring noise while they're driving down the road. Now, it's always gonna come down to one of two things, okay? First, tires, okay? The tires make contact with the road. If you have a rotational noise that's not a grinding noise that gets louder or increases in frequency or resonance as you go down the road, it's either going to be a tire or it's going to be a hub assembly, a wheel bearing, some kind of bearing in the drivetrain uh, as well. So we're going to make this video short and sweet. I'm going to give you some know-how today as far as figuring out how to diagnose the noise. Now I am in right now a 2015 Infiniti Q70, it's big sedan is all it is. When I get up to 40, 50 miles an hour and beyond, uh, and I've let this thing go for a while because I'm a mechanic, you know, I've been kind of lazy about it, but as I get going, you just hear this loud droning rumbling noise that's driving me crazy. I already am fairly confident that it's a wheel bearing, but I'm gonna give you guys today the know-how to figure out if it's a tire or if it's a wheel bearing. All you're gonna need is a jack, jack stands, or a vehicle lift, some way to get the vehicle up off the ground. If you have all-wheel drive like this car does, you're gonna need four jack stands. You're not gonna be able to use two. So you're gonna need four jack stands or three and the jack, that's safe enough in my opinion because the car is probably not gonna teeter down. Today, we're gonna be using a hoist. So let's get into the video. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to figure this out. We're gonna make it super, super easy for you. All right, so here's the car right here. We also got a headlight out. I just noticed that, wonderful. We gotta pull the bumper off. But we're using a hoist, obviously. If you guys follow the channel, this building is still under construction, not even finished with the insulation yet. But this will serve well for the purpose of demonstrating to you how to figure this out. Now, obviously, you're not going to have it this high off the ground with jack stands. But nonetheless, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start it up. We're going to drive it with all four wheels suspended. A lot of you guys are like, wait, what? Yes, you're going to drive it with all four wheels suspended. And you're not actually going to drive it. You're going to put the car in drive. You're going to let the tires start turning. You may need another person to actually give it gas to increase the tire speed. We're not there yet, but we're going to drive it in the air. Your traction control, your warning lights, all that stuff's going to start going haywire. My advice, if you got traction control, turn traction control off. If you got stability control, turn stability control off. Turn all the safety features off. Have it drive in the air. Take two minutes literally to check all Okay, so I haven't started moving yet. I just put it in drive, as you can see, 108K, about time my bearing's gonna go bad. Now, got it in drive, I'm gonna slowly release the brake. Now, see how we're hovering around five-ish miles an hour? If you give it gas, you're gonna be able to increase the vehicle speed. Okay, so you're gonna give it gas, you're gonna give it gas to about right here. And we're gonna try to set the cruise control. Some vehicles it will work, some it won't. So we're gonna turn it on, set it. Yep, and see it kicks it right off. So if you need help, ask your hot wife. If you don't have a hot wife, sorry. All right, we know it needs rear brakes. I already knew that. So what she's gonna do is open the door and hop in. So try to shut the door, rev it up to try to bring it up to around 30 miles an hour. So you guys, when you're testing this, about 30, 30 miles an hour is a good speed. You're gonna have to feather the gas. You're gonna have to play with it and just bring the speedo up to 30. Don't stomp on it because the car will just go crazy. There's no load on it. So bring it up to 30. All right, there we go. We got power. So, 
way you do this, for one, you can test tire run out, okay? So you can see how much the tire is actually deviating. For two, you're gonna reach your arm in, be careful of the tire, and you're gonna grab the coil spring. You will feel the vibration on the coil spring when you do it. You absolutely will. Some of you might be confused. You will literally feel vibration in the coil. So this side has no vibration. That tire looks suspect to me though. Then we got this side. And this side I can definitely feel the vibration in the coil spring. Obviously we can't film that, but if you listen, we can hear something going on in there. Bring it up to 50. Yeah, now I can really, really feel the vibration in the coil spring. Grab onto, you could try to reach up in there, but it's hard with the tire angle. So you can just grab something that attaches to the knuckle or feel the knuckle itself. And if you feel the knuckle, that will also tell you, you'll be able to feel the vibration. Now, they're all gonna have some vibration. The trick is that you're feeling for a difference in vibration. So these feel about the same. So we know it's not on the front, but like I said, I could feel an excessive amount in the driver's side front. That's the bearing we're gonna be doing. So now that you can hear better, I can feel a lot of vibration. So again, you grab the coil spring. Sometimes you can even grab like right here. You gotta be careful of the tire though. I mean, you get bit at speed, it's gonna hurt. But could feel a ton of vibration in both the coil spring and the upper control arm versus any other side of the car, you don't feel the same amount of vibration. It is the fastest, easiest way to diagnose a bad bearing, okay? Now, obviously, there's the shakedown test. If you can move the hub, right, so you basically get right here and you rock the wheel back and forth, not side to side, that's checking for steering linkage, but this way checks for ball joints, and if the bearing is bad enough, it will physically be loose. You'll rotate the wheel back and forth, kunk, 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 as you're trying to move the wheel. This has not a single loose part on the entire car. Everything is solid. I shook it down earlier when the noise was just faint. Nothing loose, nothing whatever. This bearing is still tight. It has absolutely no play. But again, when we drive it at speed, lift it up, we can feel for a vibration. So we're going to take this apart. We're going to throw a new bearing in it. I uh, am positive that will solve the roaring sound however the car does have a little bit of shake just a little bit i know where my culprit is it says passenger front wheel if you saw it spinning it was going like this slightly out around good news is winter tires are going on it that's a different conversation so we're going to junk these tires but we're going to dive into this. This video is not going to be how to do a wheel bearing, okay? There's tons of videos on that. This was simply to show you how to diagnose a bearing. Anything that rotates on the car, okay? It could be the axles. It could be the hub. It could be a drive shaft. There's a lot of things it could be, but typically a roaring noise, okay, that has resonance to it, meaning as you go down the road, is usually going to be something close to where the tires touch the pavement, typically a hub or typically a tire. So hope that solves some of your questions. If it doesn't, check out the channel. There's a lot more content on it, a lot more content to come, especially once we're done with this building. That's it, guys.